Destroying German U-boats at sea was one thing, but actually capturing one intact quite another. During World War II, Germany commissioned a total of 1,162 U-boats of all types, of which 785 were destroyed, and the remainder either surrendered or scuttled at the end of the war. But of that total, only six U-boats were captured intact by the Allies during the war. Each was worth its weight in gold, yielding a mass of intelligence material about U-boat design and operation, and access to the top-secret Enigma code machines, desperately needed by the Allies to enable the penetration of Germany's seemingly secure messaging system. And each of the captures of a U-boat was classified top-secret. The Germans never realizing that a U-boat, its crew, and the secrets aboard her had fallen into Allied hands. The first capture had been accomplished by the British on the 9th of May 1941, during the height of the U-boat slaughter of Atlantic convoy ships, when U-110, a Type 9B U-boat, was badly damaged by depth charges from two Royal Navy warships. The captain of the U-110 decided to abandon ship, ordering his crew overboard after surfacing, intending to scuttle her shortly afterwards. In a daring raid, a British boarding party was sent aboard the half-submerged U-boat to snatch code books, papers, and an Enigma machine. The U-110 sank the following day, and the code books were sent to Bletchley Park in England to assist with breaking German codes. The capture of the submarine was kept top secret. The German naval command assumed she had been destroyed by enemy action, and her crew had perished at sea. Several more times, Royal Navy boarding parties managed to get aboard foundering U-boats to snatch papers and Enigma machines. The first capture for the U.S. Navy came on the 4th of June 1944, just two days before the Normandy landings. U-505 was a Type 9C submarine of 1,120 tons surfaced, 76.76 meters long. And able to dive to 230 meters or 750 feet. Armed with six torpedo tubes, she had a complement of 56 men. She also had a reputation as a very unlucky boat. Commissioned in August 1941, U-505 completed 11 war patrols, suffering heavy damage and even the onboard suicide of her previous commanding officer. In return, she only managed to sink eight Allied merchant ships before her final 12th patrol in 1944. Her new commander was Oberleutnant zur See Harold Langer. Unfortunately for the Germans, Allied decryption of their signals traffic had turned the U-boats from the feared wolves of the high seas into the hunted, and U-boat casualties had risen dramatically in 1943 as improved Allied anti-submarine technology and weapons took their tolls. The Allies became aware that U-boats were operating in the Atlantic near the Cape Verde Islands. The U.S. Navy directed a hunter-killer group built around the escort carrier USS Guadalcanal to find and destroy the German submarines. They searched using HUFDUF, or high-frequency direction-finding fixes, and by visual searches by aircraft from the carrier and crewmen on the ships. Accompanying the Guadalcanal were five destroyer escorts. One of these, USS Chatelain, obtained a sonar contact on a U-boat at 11:09 on the morning of the 4th of June 1944, some 150 miles off the West African coast. It was U-505. The other destroyer escorts closed in rapidly to begin depth charging, while aircraft from the Guadalcanal flew overhead. But the U-505 was only 800 yards off Chatelain's starboard bow, and her depth charges did not sink fast enough to damage the U-boat as she manoeuvred. Instead, a Hedgehog anti-submarine mortar was fired. 
U505 moved away, but was spotted from the air, and Chatelaine decided to depth charge her again, a large patch of oil rising to the surface. Clearly, U505 had suffered serious damage. Aboard the German U-boat, Captain Langer processed damage reports that appeared to indicate that his submarine was doomed. Just seven minutes after the first depth charge attack, he ordered the U-boat to the surface. His intentions were clear. He would order his crew to abandon ship, presumably setting scuttling charges before they went. When U-505 popped up 700 yards from the Chatelaine, all the ships in the task force opened fire. At 11.22 and a half, the wounded U-boat surfaces right in the middle of the task group. Commence firing. The planes open up first. Now the brawl really began. Pour it on, lad. In the chaos, Langer gave the order to abandon U-505, but other than opening some valves to the sea, no one set the scuttling charges. As the crew went overboard, the U-505 continued along on the surface, her engines still running and her damage rudders locked, causing her to sail in a long circle at seven knots. As the U.S. ships rescued the German sailors from the water, a boarding party of eight men led by Lieutenant Junior Grade Albert David from the USS Pillsbury went aboard U-505. This was incredibly dangerous, as everyone expected scuttling charges to go off at any minute. David and his men went below and quickly gathered up documents, charts and the Enigma machine, then closed the valves the Germans had opened to the sea and managed to disarm the scuttling charges. Finally, they stopped the submarine's engines. U-505 was partially submerged, down by the stern and dead in the water. Attempting to take U-505 in tow, USS Pillsbury collided repeatedly with the submarine a neat bit of seamanship. But watch out, that sub is still as dangerous as a wounded shark. She swings into the Pillsbury, and her bow flippers rip a long underwater gash in the DE's thin plates, flooding two main compartments clear up to the waterline. destroyer has to cut loose and back clear. The Pillsbury radios. Sub says she has to be towed to stay afloat, but we don't think a destroyer can do it. So the Guadalcanal heads over and says on the TBS, destroyer stand clear. I'm going to take her in tow myself. Later, a second salvage party landed on the U-boat and a tow line was fixed to her from the USS Guadalcanal. This is a job to test the metal of veteran seamen. And four out of five of those boys on the sub's forecastle are green. But there is no fumbling. The anxious skipper heaves a sigh of relief as the sub makes way and rises in the water. She is safe again for the time being and under a new flag. 
Cleverly, a US engineer managed to engage the U-boat's propellers while she was under tow in such a way as to charge the submarine's batteries without engaging the engines, enabling the water aboard her to be pumped out, and her ballast tanks were also blown, bringing U-505 fully to the surface. The U-boat was later towed by a Navy tug 1,700 miles to Port Royal Bay in Bermuda, where she would reveal a treasure trove of intelligence materials, the U-boat command having no idea the submarine was in U.S. hands. Out of the German crew, only one man was killed and three wounded from the battle for the submarine. The crew was interned at Camp Ruston in Louisiana. Lieutenant David was awarded the Medal of Honor for leading the boarding party. Many other sailors involved in the operation also received awards. To ensure that the Germans never discovered that U-505 had been captured intact, she was repainted in U.S. color scheme and called the USS Nemo. When the war in Europe ended, she was used for a war bonds drive. Soon surplus to requirements, the U.S. Navy intended to sink U-505 as a target, but the brother of the commanding officer of the USS Guadalcanal contacted the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. After negotiations, the U.S. government donated U-505 to the museum in 1954. Today you can visit this fascinating U-boat, now displayed indoors and fully restored to how it looked in 1944. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. You can also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. Details below. You can also help support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details again in the description box.